So we're going to do the pre-flight. Yep. We'll walk through, through the pre-flight and the stuff we're going to check. Okay. First thing we want to do is make sure this looks right. This is where we're going to be turning the cut off. So okay. Come up here, have a look inside. Make sure all your switches are off. Yep. Okay, mask off, mags off, all switches are off. Yeah, good. Those are right and we'll start at the front, come right around so we end up at the front again. So starting with the propeller first, remember your prop safety about turning the prop. Yep. Which is why we select the switches off and check the switches are off and also when we're turning, make sure we're keeping ourselves out of the prop arm. Okay. We want to have a look at the pro propellers okay first. Yep. So. Most of the damage is going to always occur on the leading edges and the back face. Yep. So have a good look at your leading edge. We're looking for impact damage. So stones, anything hard that's been hitting, flying in the rain too much will abrade this away. You can yep. see how up this end is quite smooth. Yep. There's not much wear and as you get down towards the tip, we're feeling it's a bit rougher. And okay. It's actually worn right on the end. We can see some little holes in the in the yep. in the rubber moulding where it's starting to. Uh, inclusions in the moulding. So where, it, when do you draw the line? In, when, when, when's too much damage? Like you've got a few right. little nicks here and holes. If you're not sure, yep. come and ask somebody about it. Yep. Because this is a rubber insert, these little holes are actually little air bubbles in the in the in the rubber moulding. Yep. And as it starts starts wearing down a bit, they start appearing. Okay. So if they're too too many or too bad, then we'll fill them and patch them. Yep. If there's only a few, then we we'll usually just leave them because they'll continue to wear down. Okay. Uh, the back face picked up stone damage that's yep. where you're going to get damage on the back so on the on the on look. the back here on the on the top of the, the edge. back face the whole okay, back the whole face, face. The blade, because yep. that's working as the airfoil this is the part deflecting all the air you'll never get or almost impossible to get stone damage on the front face yep. you'll get it on the back yeah and what we're looking for is things like this see that those little marks that's a that's a little chip or a gouge okay it's not just an insect mark yeah and there's another one there yeah okay if they're just minor chips like that, yep. and there's no sign of any cracking or, or they're not too deep, yep. then they're okay. They're not they're not causing a problem yep. with the prop. So and you're more worried about a crack appearing. Yes. That's a vertical if line. If you're unsure about anything, come and ask and get someone else to, to check it out. Yep. And you can see by the colour, see that one's quite white inside yep. with the chip. So that's fairly fresh. Yep. Um, that's only the last day or two. We might have even picked that up ourselves okay. today yep. with a stone. Right, so that all looks okay. So that blade, and if you see on the, the front face of it, you can see it better on this side, there's no damage. You know, the front faces yeah. are undamaged. Okay. Okay, we're going to turn the prop through one rotation. Yep. So we can check the other blade. So again, keeping clear of that prop arc, turn it through, and then inspect your other blade. Okay. The leading edge again is all okay. Yep. And then the face, a few little, few little nicks there. But no, no uh, visible cracking or anything like that. That's or bad chips. You bad know, chips, a deep yeah. chip is can, is a is a weak point that yeah. can lead to then to a crack starting. Okay. <coughs> yep. So all those marks are just dead insects. But yeah. Okay. No, no, all right. Inspect the spinner now. Looking for anything that's loose, like screws. Yep. So all these mounting screws are all in. No cracks in the spinner where somebody might have hit it or been yep. over tight and starting to crack. Because if this spinner starts to break up. Yep. It, it'll cause the prop to go out of balance. Okay, uh, right. Give you, can, can be give you quite a strong vibration. Yep. And we don't want bits of that falling off. Okay, so they're all in. And when we had the blade the other way, we, we saw the top half of it. One, two, three. Okay. Like all, all okay. Yep. yep. On the Jabiru engines, you also do a, uh, especially for the first flight of the day, we do a compression test. Okay. Where we pull it through at least. The number of blades for the number of cylinders. Okay. Four cylinder motor or six cylinder motor. Yep. You just on a four cylinder motor, I'll usually do about six. six okay. So and what, what's the purpose of the compression test? You are feeling for reasonably firm compression. And, yep. and once you've done a few and I say that's normal, you'll yep. understand what it feels like. Yep. Uh, if you've got low compression on one cylinder, it just feels quite loose. There's an issue with that. Right. Cylinder, yeah. So you could get a case where you've got three good compressions and this one, oh, it feels a bit, if bit one loose. If low, yep. yep then there's a pr issue with that sort problem of okay so we need to check it it may be a leaky valve it may be um you know worn rings shouldn't be just wear because it wouldn't have happened quickly but anything that's developed since the last time we flew it indicates some sort of issue yeah most likely a valve is leaking valve's yep. not sealing properly um possibly a, a stuck ring sometimes yeah something that can happen in the last flight so four compression uh, or four to six compressions so one and again notice i'm pulling up and away <laughs> Yep. And 
my body weight's moving back away from the top. Never into it. Never into it. Yep. You never push down like pushing into it, so your weight's moving forward. Right, into the top. okay. Yep. You're always pulling up and away. That way, if you slip and it starts, you're, you're, you're falling, falling backwards. Back. You're, okay. You want your weight to be transferring away from the engine or the prop, not into it. Okay. Uh, so that was one, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, and have a try for yourself. Yep. Let's see. Get the propeller, no, just one hand. See, on the, okay. okay, see how you're pushing down now, and that's tending okay. to throw your weight in. Yep. So, st stop. Yep. Hold it out here like this, a fair way out, so you've got better leverage. If you hold it in here, you've got to pull a lot harder. Yep. So you want to hold it out about here somewhere, and just pulling up and moving your, your body weight, stepping away. Try doing it one-handed so you get a good feel for the amount of force required. Now see how you're standing flat-footed? Yep. So move, move your body weight away a bit as you do it. Okay. Better. Yeah, it's quite a. You, you fairly, need a fair bit of force, that's really. Right, fairly strong, but they're all nice and even. Yep. And okay. And that's what you're looking for, that so even, even kind of. A good, com force. good compression, and uh, nice and even between them, between all of them. Okay. There's not a big difference in. Any and that's done um, at the start of each day, first flight of each day. Yes. Yeah. Uh, first before each flight, usually you do it before each flight. If okay. You pre -flight, pull it through, pull it okay. Because if something's gone wrong in our last flight. The next guy's going to pick it up. Yep. Okay. But definitely part of the uh, the data inspection. Yeah. While we're here, we just we stand back and we just see how the plane's sitting. It's sitting nice and square. It's not hanging down one side or the other, which is a good indicator that there's no undercarriage problems. If yep. Somebody's just done some damage and it won't be sitting square. No flat tire. And your nose wheel, yeah, or a flat tire. And have a look at the nose leg. When the nose wheel's straight, the leg should look as though it's sitting pretty well straight up and down. Okay. Yeah. Has a bit of All right. Check the tread on the tyre. We've got plenty of tread on the front tyre, and, and it yep. doesn't look flat. We, we can, uh, and then we can also while we're here, just lift up and down a little bit and see that the nose leg is, is moving freely. Okay. On the jabs, that's not much of an issue. On some aircraft, with like an oleo strut, if someone's landed yep. on the nose wheel and bent it, yep. it will it will be binding or jamming. So what do you mean when it's new, uh, moving freely in that that case? What what are we looking for that's moving? The, the nose leg itself, the front suspension. So oh, okay, right. The way this is a trailing arm. Yeah. Uh, set up. Yeah. On the Alpha and on the Cessnas, you've got an oleo strut that just is moving up. Right. There. Okay. If that's been bent. Yeah. Then it'll it'll be stiff or it'll jam. Yeah, there'd be no no uh, suspension there. Yeah. And on the Cessnas, particularly, they use uh, air pressure to provide the spring. And if they've lost air pressure, you'll find the nose leg has collapsed. Okay. Sitting down too low. Yeah. Alright. Now what about these intakes here? We've got one up the engine, something down here, is that...? Air intake, so the yep. two top ones are air for the um, cooling the cylinders and the engine. Yep. And this one here is for your oil cooler. Oil cooler, right. Um, very unlikely you get problems in there, but potentially a plane parked outside, you can sometimes have birds, bird's nests bird's nest or uh, the mower going past, the, the bone of the grass, lots of long grass and it's got blown around, sometimes you find you've got grass blown up in there. Yep. And there's another little hole there, just um, off to the right there. That one is for your cabin heat. Cabin so heat, right. So that's just a fresh air pickup right up the front where it's picking up nice clean air, and that goes through to use for the cabin heat. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. Yep. And passed over the exhaust, yep. over the muffler, down yep. to the bottom to warm it up, and then up into the cabin. Okay. Right. We'll do the oil and the fuel as separate checks. Okay. So yep. Rather than mixing them in, uh, yep. I think. So we'll, we'll leave that to later, but obviously your oil's in there. Yep. Keep coming along again, making sure that all the fasteners are in, there's no signs of things coming loose and starting to come out. Yep. You get, if a fastener's been loose, you get like um, what they call smoking, where you get a bit of a, a black line start to come come back off it. Right. Normally indicates that the fastener's not tight. Okay, so what causes the black line? Uh, with aluminium, it's, it's aluminium oxide. Right. Because if the fastener's loose, then things are, are rattling and vibrating. Yeah. Yep. Um, we still often get it on these because of um, just the um, oxide off the screws. Yeah. Or um, uh, dirt and grease and or oil from inside. Yeah. Um, if that's loose, it'll, it'll sometimes give you a bit of a mark. Okay. But it, the, that smoking is more applicable with aluminium than fiberglass. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's our jump starter for if we have a flat battery. Um, as well as those screws, there's also a pin that runs right along here to hold the two halves together. So when you're up the front here, you can just give it a little bit of a tug and make sure that that pin's in. Okay. Occasionally yep. when people put it in, they miss and yep. it hasn't been engaged properly. Let's 
see it doesn't want to separate. Yep. yep. Right firm, okay. Now again, a visual look as we come past, just for things that are broken, damaged, or out of yep. place. See this cracking here? Yep. In a fiberglass structure, that could indicate a structural problem or yep. a structural crack. So again, get someone to come and explain it to you to see is that a problem or not a problem. Yep. In this case, it's the joint between at the bottom of the windscreen where the windscreen's been put on and then see there's a bit of a rusty mark there. Yep. These windscreens are bolted on. Yep. And then they fill it up to make it look nice with a, a what we call bog, which is right. A, okay. Yep. A One of the with a, with yep. a filler added to it. Yep. So what's happening here is after an amount of time and number of hours, you get some flexing and everything yep. when we're flying, and the bog can start to crack. Yeah. So this is just a cosmetic crack, not a, um, not yeah, a structural, structural thing. Crack. Okay. So it's bolted on yeah, onto the inside it, here. That, that's the actual, that's where the, the fiberglass, uh, where the first specs finish. Finished first, yeah, okay. So there's a, you know, there's a, a, a joggle or like a rebate in there that the fiberglass, that the first spec sits down into, and then just to smooth it off, they've bogged up the joint. But sometimes it ends up being quite thin when they're sanded back, and it'll crack very easily. Yeah. See a lot of them will crack, and we'll see it again up here around the top up here. Okay. Uh, any apparent damage, things that are loose. Before we move past here, we'll check the strut bottom. Now the wing strut, pretty important in holding the wings on. Yep. We want to make sure that all this is secure. So this is where you'll see smoking okay. off, off fittings that are loose, because we've got an aluminium strut yep. uh, with fasteners into it. So if there's anything's come loose, it starts to oxidize and rub, okay. and you get that, that distinctive black. So it's, it's basically indicating uh, that it's loose or there's corrosion or, or both? Usually looseness. <coughs> right. The fact that it's loose, it'll start to move. Uh, yep. and, um, and generate that black paste. Okay, so they're really tight. So, yep. yep. So there's no sign of anything like that on the, the top of the screws yep. and the fast the underneath as well. Okay. Uh, the undercarriage leg. Yep. Look for signs of, of uh, splitting or delamination. Now, the leg is never going <coughs> to break through that way unless it's had an accident and been, been overstressed. But it's laid up in layers, yeah. and and after a, a long time, or with a number of heavy landings, or just one bad landing, it's possible to for these laminations to start to what they call delaminate or split. Okay. So you'll see a split this way, running right. down, like like the grain, as though this was made of timber. <coughs> yeah. Like a split running with the grain. That indicates that that the uh, layers of fiberglass have actually separated in there. So this is fiberglass, is it? Yep, solid fiberglass. Okay. All right. Fiberglass so it's big better. sheets. White sheets either just say it's one, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, six that's or about two hundred laminations. Two hundred, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. far out. Um, the cloth is cut you know, to that shape, and then that's incredible. They lay it up and laminate it up. Yep. Uh, down around our brakes. Yep. Uh, we can see the pads. Everything's nicely exposed. The brake pads there. Yep. The brake disc, and any leakages. So a fluid leak is going to show up as a you know staining and leakage yep. around here, or a drop, or even there. drips on the floor. Yep. These are our brake lines. So that's the, the brake fluid coming down. Tees off here, one to the front caliper, one to the back caliper. Okay. All right, the tyre looks okay. Yep. Front, plenty of tread. Yep. And pressure looks good. You can always try the opposite of the tyre test. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay, up at the top, same thing. Top end of the strut. We want to look at those fittings again and look for any signs of looseness in those fastenings. Okay. Yep, on the way past, we went past the fuel cap, so as I walk past, I usually just give it a little tug to make sure they're not loose. Okay. Especially if it's been refueled. Keep wandering past and we'll get to the pitot. Yep. We want to make sure the pitot's clear, so look in the end of the pitot and make sure that nothing there. there's nothing. Uh, you haven't got a bug actually gone into it or a mud wasp blocked it. Mud okay. wasps love little holes like that. Yep. And in the right season, in the right place, you can park on the ground for 10 minutes and come back and there's a mud wasp already started to block that off. Yeah, right, wow. And what about the, uh, th there's a little hole at the front there and three holes at the back? Yeah, the ones at the back are drain holes. Yeah. So any moisture that comes in here lets it out rather than going up the tube into the pedo system. Yeah. And the one at the front on this particular pedo um, tube is used for an angle of attack indicator. Okay, right. So unless it's been configured in the software, it's non-operational and it uses a separate separate um, tube as well so it may not have been hooked up in this okay. case it's hooked up but yep. we've disabled it yep. um, just as a distraction on the display so just looking up here we've got um, some, some nice uh, silver screws this one's a little bit rusty would, would that yep. be something you'd pick up in a 
yeah. pre-flight? In this case, that's not an issue because it's um, it's just a it's just uh, a fairing, you just hold in the yeah. little fairing on, yeah, and it's a um, it's not a stainless steel screw. So yeah. after a while down here on the coast, particularly, they go rusty. What we try and do is as we as they get like that, we discard them and put stainless steel ones in. Yeah. So that's just one that hasn't been done yet. We'll get done on the next service, hopefully. Yep. Yeah. And there's just a uh, hole on the underside of the wing there. Yeah, that's that's uh, access point. Right. for the attachment at the back of the cable. Okay. Um, usually just, again, for cosmetics and to keep spiders or things out of them, we just put a bit of tape on. Okay, right. Uh, looking for damage along the leading edge. Yep. You see here there's some what looks like damage, so have a look and you'll see what's happened is the paint's been scraped off. Okay. So that's what we call hangar ash, where someone's another, another wing tip come over it and taken the paint off, but there's no damage to the actual skin or the fiberglass. Okay, yeah. Uh, again, around the end here, all good. Winglets coming around to the control surfaces. We want to make sure what holds it on and what makes it wiggle. Okay. So, <coughs> have a look at the hinge mechanism. We've got a piano hinge here, a piano hinge at this end. Yep. As long as that hinge pins in, there's nothing much to go wrong with the piano hinge. Yep. It's pretty sturdy. <coughs> um, the only thing we want to check for, as well as the pin being in place, is play in the hinge. Right. So just push it up and down and make sure there's not too much play. Okay, in right. Hinge. Yep. So it feels pretty secure yeah. there. Yeah, start getting too much play, then you can start to get flutter in the control surface. And the same at this end. Yeah, this one just got a little bit more play. Yep, a little yep. bit more movement, but yep. within it, within tolerances. Okay. And what makes it so uh, that's what holds it on. What makes it move? Notice there's a bit of a lump here. That's the other end of this control horn that goes right through. Yep. It's actually uh, bonded into both sides of it. So we want to make sure there's no sign of obviously that cracking or breaking or pulling out of the surface of yep. the control surface. And then what what's the mechanism to move it? So nut, bolt, um, no. and a rose joint. Okay. And a rose joint or rod end. We want to make sure it's free and hasn't um, particularly been exposed. Yeah. So it's got to be a bit loose like that for it to. That's the move to work. That's yeah. that's what the movement in the joint. That's what we want to make sure the joint can move like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, if it doesn't move, then it's seized or corroded or very stiff and that's going to then apply extra um, bending forces yeah. on your, on your uh, fixing arrangement. So we can move this up and down? Yeah because yeah. it's stiff enough to do so. Yeah. On on a on a, an RV say with a thin skin or, or a technan with a thin skin somebody might get a bit worried about you doing it. Yeah. Be careful if you push down where it might push and make finger dents. In this case I normally do it this way where you're just pushing on the back surface where it's quite stiff. But okay. this, this skin is actually strong enough to do yeah. that without causing any damage. Okay. Some skin, some fiberglass uh, construction uses a foam where they'll have a they'll have a, a thin laminate on either side and some foam in the center. Yeah. So it looks like this, it looks okay, but when you squeeze it, you'll actually compress that foam and okay. then it puts little finger dents in it. Yep. So again, no no the aircraft and what you, you can and can't do with it. Okay, and we don't want to see any signs of this outer cable moving so that's what this clear inspection panel falls down here so yep. if you have a look down in there and you'll see you can see where you probably might not pick it up on the camera but you can see where the the uh, add-on cables come out yep. it turns around and then yep. it's fastened on okay so just when, move we, when you move the control you don't want to see that no it's not moving, it's at, moving all. at all in there because otherwise your outer will just move and the control surface won't right move. okay okay the next control we find is a flap and a different way of holding it on. What holds it on? Oh, we can see we've got a different system. Yep. So we've got brackets coming down, horns coming out of the control surface and a pivot going through. So we're looking at this and you can see a fair bit of corrosion on these. These are due to re be replaced, um, but we've actually got to do a, a fix on them because there's some there's a, an issue with the inside tubing is, is uh, corroded onto the bolt, so we can't yep. just pull the bolt out easily. So you're looking at what holds it on, no, no cracking, everything looks secure. And then when you move it, you don't get too much play in it. Okay, moving the flap? Yeah. Or just doing something like moving that? Flaps. Okay. So see, see there's, there's some play in that? Yeah. That's almost at its limit of, yep. of movement. Okay. So, but we couldn't take it out to replace it, so we've had to get a special kit made up, and this is due to get done shortly. Yep. So there's four of those, you check them all. Yeah. They're all good. Yep. And the last one in there, yep. Okay. And then what makes it move? We've got a, see we've got a control rod coming down here, another one of those rose joints or ball ends. Yep. 
Uh, we've got our, our fastener through with, with three threads or a, between one and three threads hanging out the end of the nylon nut. Yep. That way we know that the nylon um, um, nylon washer that's in here is engaged on the thread. Okay. So that the nylon nut's going to work as it should. Yep. You can't really see down in there to see the other ball joint, so you're hoping that they check it well on the service. There is an inspection port in there again to gain access to it, but you yeah. can't, again, you can't really see much. Okay. Right, the fuel drain you know about, we do that as a separate issue. Yep. Uh, again, just fasteners, you know, all these little bearings and things, just a quick scan as you go past it, none of the, yep. none of the fasteners have come out. Just keep moving back, scanning along again, looking for any signs of obvious damage. Another, another um, control surface. There's a good example of how that clamp works on the outer one cable. So the outer cable comes along, we've got a yep. clamp plate here with a little indent, yep. which goes into a little groove in the end of the cable. So all that needs to be firm so that when you're trying to move the, the control surface, this yep. outer cable, there's no movement in that outer cable. Yep. Okay. This, is, so this is just a rubber cover, yep. the outer cable is not moving. Got that same rose joint arrangement again. Yep, should be That's loose. Free to move. Yep. Yep. No play in it. We've got a, a nut, we've got some threads coming out the bottom there so we know the nylock's engaged. And these are actual stops. Yep. So just so that you limit the control. And you can't really move this surface because it's linked to the nose wheel, is Correct. that right? Yeah, yeah. Alright again. No signs of damage along here, some some minor chipping on the leading edge, but no no bad hits or yep. cracking starting. So you're really looking for cracking, um, not so much the paint, but really in, in the fiberglass underneath? Yes, That's yeah, yeah. You don't want to see that. And on yeah. a leading edge, if, if that joint is starting to split, if it's been yeah. hit for some reason to damage the joint, it can start to open up. Okay. All right. The elevator. Again, the same system with the uh, piano hinges. So we can see what our little hinge pins are in, just the peepers on them. And try and pull it up and down and see if there's any movement in that, in that hinge assembly. Okay. Yep, that's okay, pretty good. good. Come along here and what makes it move? So that's what, what holds what is holding it on and down here is another control horn. Yep. And in there is the attachment. So you can okay. inspect the hole and have a look, make sure that the, the, the nuts are on. There's, yep. there's two two arms attached there or two cables attached. Yep. One is your elevator cable, one is your trim cable. Okay. Yep. Oh yeah, I can see that. Yep. And the yard is not moving moving when you're doing that? Yeah. Good. Okay. The engines are all good. Come around the end here, check for the play on this end. Even better. Okay. No damage on the front here. This is the counterweight by the way that counterbalances the weight of the flap, so these are a, a balanced control surface. Okay. Uh, finish off the rudder, the hinges, play in that hinges, any any slop in the hinge moving around more than it should. Yep. Up at the top there we've got a static port to check. Yep. You can't reach it, you can't see it, so this is where we're going to bring the plane aircraft down. Just push down here. Okay. And you want to be able to see look through. through that little hole there. Okay, yeah, you can just see through to the other side. Yep. Good. Okay. So that's your static print. You know how it works. The, the big, the big uh, protrusion in the front there is really just deflecting the air to give oh, a little okay. bubble of air, little bubble yeah. of still air. So it's even though we're doing 100 knots through the air, there's no dynamic pressure. Exactly. Yeah. There's a little air bubble just behind that. So just behind that step. So all this is just solid piece of aluminium yeah. to create a little air bubble oh, that's behind clever. that step. Yeah. That just sits there no matter what speed we're doing. Yeah. And is this just another inspection point? Yeah, that's yeah. again the access to the back of the, okay, the rudder right. cable bolted on. Yep. And, uh, your aircraft plate. and this is uh, and VHF? This is one of your antennas. Yep. You've got, this aircraft was fitted with two, so it's actually got an um, external and another internal antenna as well. Okay. With fiberglass you can have antennas inside and they still work. Yeah. With a metal aircraft they've all got to be external. Yeah, okay. Same as the other side with our flaps, check for, for excess movement in the control surface and then check all your, your um, attachments that move the control yep. and the attachments that hold it on. There's no sign of cracking or damage on the brackets. Yep. All our nuts and bolts are in place. We've got a little bit of threading going from the back. 
All good. Come along to the other on, same as the other side. Lift it up. Make sure both hinge pins are in. Yeah, no, no see play there. See off the excess play in the in the surface. And again, yeah. see on that inner one, just a little bit of play. Yep. Yeah. But still within its limits. Okay. And then on the top, again, no sign of this control horn being damaged, coming out or, or cracking. Uh, the attachments are all okay with plenty of thread. Probably that's you don't want to see any more threads than that. Okay. Because these these uh, fasteners have all got a shank and they're yeah. thread, so they're not threaded all the way up. Okay. So if you see too many threads coming out the end, it means the nut's bottomed out. Okay, right. So if you've got a situation where it's supposed to be torque to a particular torque, then it probably isn't because the nut's just bottomed out on yeah, the thread. Yeah, yeah. That's why the convention is between one and three threads showing. Okay. All right, and, and it's loose up there. Yep. Okay. Back to here, we'll check our fuel cap. Yep, all good. Yep, coming out. Occasionally people will put these in back to front. Yep. So the vent holes will be facing backwards instead of forwards. Oh, okay, right. So if you, it should be facing forwards with the vent holes facing forward okay. and also, also clear. Yep. That's why we cover those, you know, the covers we take off normally, yep. just to make sure nothing locks those vent holes up. Okay. Otherwise the fuel won't drain properly from the tank. Yep. Could possibly also, if you get enough, uh, vacuum in there and start collapsing the tank. These tanks, fiberglass, are fairly stiff. Yep. Not too much of an issue, but I've seen metal tanks that are collapsed. Okay. Or, or um, rubber ladders. Fasteners again, no sign of, um, of any movement on them. Same with the one on the bottom. Okay. Your undercarriage leg. So, no cracking. Yep. Down along the laminate. No sign of any delamination there or splitting. And yep. the disc brakes look good. Plenty of pad material. Yep. You haven't got a big gap between the disc and the. Um, yep. Which you'd soon know about when you want to use the brakes, and no sign of any brake leak. Yep. The joints. And the tyre looks good. Tyre looks good, yep. Plenty of tread, and it looks like it's got plenty of pressure on it. Nice to turn. Alright, there's one other thing on this wing. What's that? Store warning? Store warning, yes. And does that work on airflow into it or what? Uh, I think yeah, it works on, does the pressure reduce over the wing? It works on a, a reduction in pressure. Actually works on suction, yeah. You yeah. got a tissue or something in your pocket? Uh, I don't, no. Check it out. No, but I'm happy to, yeah. you do though. <laughs> happy to the wing, here's one I prepared earlier. You should be able to should be able to breathe through that. So, so does the, the, ma the, so the master doesn't have to be on or anything? No, just it's a mechanical system. So blow into it. Yeah. Just use one layer so you can get plenty of airflow through it. Blow into it. Can't hear any noise. Okay. Suck on it now. So you're yeah. creating negative pressure. Aha. Uh -huh. Did you hear that noise? Yeah. That's the stall warning. Okay. So the stall, that's your stall warning. That's what yeah. it sounds like. Yeah. You can see it's working properly. Yeah. And it's caused by air flowing out of that, out of it, not right. into it. Okay. So at the high angle of attack, You'll, get a, you'll actually get the low pressure area from the top of the wing coming right down to here. Yep. And the airflow will start to flow out of the cabin and actually back out here. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's good. The little the little horn inside the cabin, you can take it out and do the same thing. If you blow into it, it doesn't make a noise. Yeah. When the airflow comes back through it, that's when it goes on. Yeah, okay. So if everyone looks at that and just assumes it's air going in that causes yeah. it, but it's actually airflow Suction. the other way. All right, continuing on that, you know, looking for any signs of damage and loose fastness yep. and things like that. Yeah, that's from okay. people letting the door slam open. Okay, right. And, yep. and stretching on the hinges and coming right back on the door, actually touching on the, on the fuse. Yeah, okay. And looking back, nose wear looks okay. Doesn't look like it's collapsed. Yep. And we've got plenty of tire pressure in there. So and this it. little inlet here. Okay, that's your it? fresh air intake. For okay, the right. That, that's where it's... That's the, the air intake for the carby. 